Today we will discuss a topic on cholecystic cyst. Cholecystic cyst. First, what is a cholecystic cyst? Cholecystic cyst is defined as an abnormal dilatation, no cystic dilatation of common bile duct, hepatic duct, or cystic duct. The word cholecystic cyst is nowadays is termed as a biliary cyst or modified into a biliary cyst. The term is considered more appropriate. Because the word cholecystis means common bile duct. The dilatation, but the dilatation can occur anywhere, not only in the bile duct, common bile duct. It can occur anywhere, such as the cystic duct, or hepatic duct, or the intraduodenal part of the common bile duct. So it is nowadays more appropriate to call cholecystis cyst as a biliary cyst. And it has been widely used nowadays. Second thing is, it is most common in females. It is almost a ten to one ratio. Most common age group, it is seen in infants, but the clinical presentation occurs at the age of approximately the median age would be sixteen years to thirty-two years. So next, coming to the classification. First, initially, it was classified by Alonso into three types. Later, it was followed by Caroli. Caroli discovered an embryological development malformation mainly in the portal plate. There is a malformation in the portal plate, which he termed later, which he later termed as a, he later termed as Caroli's disease. Caroli's disease. We will discuss later on, mainly of the intrahepatic portion of the. Bile duct gets dilated. Next came Todani. Todani modified both the Alonzo and Caroli's disease and combined both of them into a new classification, which is now widely accepted into five types. First type there is in first type there is sacular or fusiform dilatation of the CBD. There is sacular or fusiform dilatation of the CBD. Further. Can be classified into one A and one B. In one A, the gallbladder arises from the cholecystic cyst itself, whereas in one B, only the distal end. For example, this is your left hepatic, right hepatic, and your cystic duct. Till this portion, the bile duct is normal. Only in the distal end, the bile duct gets dilated. The distal end. It's classified as the type one B. Recently, it has been uh, into a debate or in a controversial topic. Uh, they classify uh, two more types, or there are two more types to Todoni classification, but it is not included. Remember, one D is type one D, and type six is not included in Todoni classification. Todoni classification. One D is nothing but cystic duct is dilated. In addition to common bile duct and hepatic duct, whereas type C there is only cystic duct dilatation, whereas the common bile duct or the hepatic duct is normal. The type six is very very rare, very very rare type. Next, coming to type two. In type two, there is a lateral diverticulum in the preduodenal region. There is a lateral diverticulum. Occurring in the pre-duodenum. This is your duodenum. This is a lateral diverticulum in the pre-duodenal region. Next, so type three. In type three, there is intra-duodenal part of the common bile duct gets dilated, which is termed as cholecystocele. It's the least common type, whereas your type one is most common, followed by type four, and in adults, it's most common type. So what is type four? Again, type four can be divided into four A and four B. Four A is nothing but this is the both the intrahepatic and the extrahepatic bile duct get, gets dilated. See, this is your intrahepatic. The intrahepatic part is also dilated. This is your extrahepatic part of your bile duct is also getting dilated. This is most common. Then four B type in which only the extrahepatic bile duct gets dilated. Next, moving on to type five, which was originally described by Caroli. 
it is an autosomal recessive disorder it is an autosomal recessive disorder disorder that's an important question it can be asked for you in your mcq on ct scan you find a central dot sign which is basically nothing but your portal vein radical is nothing but your portal vein radical so when it is an carolis disease that is your nothing but it is an intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation there is a multiple multiple intrahepatic bile duct dilatation when this is getting associated with fibrosis the term is called as grumbach's disease understood all these three things are mcq carolis disease what is carolis disease it is an intrahepatic biliary duct dilatation multiple in number it is due to portal plate malformation we saw it earlier in the initial slide itself it is due to portal plate malformation it is an embryological disorder it is an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern of disorder and on ct scan you can find a sign called as a central dot sign in which the central dot corresponds to your portal vein radical if you do a usg doppler i'll show you the images in the coming slides if you do usg you can see the doppler flow in the region so when this carolis disease is combined or associated with fibrosis it is termed as grumbach's disease next coming to the complication the carolis disease has some specific complications such as the intrahepatic stone formation intrahepatic abscess this intrahepatic bile stone has uh, another name called as hepatolithiasis we'll show you the photos and the images in the coming slide it can turn into malignancy it can turn into a stricture so basically this is your normal normally developed this is your normal portal plate development whereas this is your normal plate portal plan whereas this is ductal plate malformation which gives rise to carolis disease it's basically an embryological malformation so this is your central dot sign this is your central dot sign you can see it this is basically corresponding to your portal vein radical which is um, seen in the usg doppler this is your doppler study usg doppler flow so i told there are some specific complications arises in carolis disease okay so specific complication arises in carolis disease one such complication is intrahepatic stone which is called as hepatolithiasis similarly there is intrahepatic abscess formation uh, extra edge point i want to have here is that the intrahepatic abscess are more common in left side rather than your right side so, the reason behind the left side is that one they say that it takes a longer duration for drainage second is its angulation so if it only asks intrahepatic or hepatic abscess is more common on which side uh, left or right is always left so this picture clearly shows you the totally classification in which the type 1 is most common and it is followed by type 4a which is a dilatation of both the intrahepatic and the extrahepatic both the intrahepatic and the extrahepatic second most common type and is most common in adults type 3 is the least common okay in which there is an intra duodenal part of the bile duct becomes dilated so this is your radiological image in which you can clearly define your sacular or fusiform dilatation of the cbd type 1 it's most common in type 2 that is lateral diverticulum clearly identify this this image can you identify what is the investigation being done here anyone can guess it so later on we'll discuss what is this investigation has been done in type 3 it is called as coli do co seal that is the intra duodenal part intra duodenal part of the bile duct gets dilated in type 4 basically this shows type 4 a in which both the intrahepatic extrahepatic ducts both get dilated so what are the clinical features actually uh, the there is a triad 
is called as triad of collidocal cyst and it comprises of the right upper quarantine palpable mass and the jaundice jaundice is the most common symptom among this it's not always that the patient presents with triad of jaundice and a palpable mass only 10% of the population presents with this classic triad understood so what are the complications what are the complications actually we discussed uh, what are the complications specifically seen in carolis disease okay now i'm going to the list down the complications or complications due to polydocal cyst general in general so what is the first complication it can give rise to cholangitis why because due to dilatation there is stasis when there is stasis the bacteria overgrows there is suppuration and inflammation of the bacteria giving rise to cholangitis then it can cause pancreatitis in 30% of patients it's very important later on we will discuss the pathophysiology behind this it can lead to gall stones or seabury stones which is known as cystolithiasis and it can lead to hepatic stones called as hepatolithiasis also it can give rise to biliary cirrhosis and becomes the most important complication which is your malignant transformation because of this malignant transformation the topic of cholidocal cyst becomes important to know so it can transform into a wide number of malignancies i have listed some of the important malignancies one is cholid cholid in the order of more frequent complications or in the order of more frequently encountered carcinoma first is your cholangio carcinoma it is seen in almost uh, 70% of patient so this followed by gall bladder carcinoma it is almost in 20% of your patients this cholangio carcinoma is 20 times more when compared to your general population what is it more the risk of developing cholangio carcinoma in a patient with cholidocal cyst is 20 times greater than a patient with normal biliary drainage sorry no 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 then it is pancreatic cancer hepatocellular carcinoma and angio carcinoma and number of cancers can occur coming here to cholangio carcinoma i told i'll discuss the pathophysiology later now it's time to see the pathophysiology behind the cholidocal cyst developing into or the biliary cyst developing into malignancy already told that if a patient is having cholidocal cyst then 30% remember don't confuse among the malignancies of the cholidocal cyst 70% will be cholangio carcinoma 20% is gall bladder cyst and others comprise of 10% this has nothing to do with this 30% this 30% indicates that 30% of your patients with cholidocal cyst gets ca so what is the pathogenesis behind this it is a, it is a recent development this is called as abpdj i think it is nothing but the anomaly of pancreatic biliary duct junction we can see what is it in detail so first we will see what is normal pancreatic biliary junction duct junction see normally this is your pancreatic duct this is your common bile duct both of them confluence and open inside the within the second part of your jumor duodenum this is your sphincter of odi so that's short comment and the this is your common channel which is less than 5 mm what happens in cases of cholidocal cyst the theory is that the pancreatic duct this is your common bile duct joins outside your duodenum one point second point it joins the bile duct joins the pancreatic duct at an angle of 90 degree that is perpendicular direction it forms and the third thing there is a long channel long channel outside communicating from the duodenum outside of the duodenum to the second part of the duodenum at say say it's almost greater than some 15 mm so what happens is that the pancreatic juices goes from pancreatic duct to bile duct in a reciprocal manner from a bile duct to pancreatic duct this is called as a reciprocal reflex so what can happen when there is a disjunction what is the disjunction that is there is an anomalous disjunction happening at the pancreatic biliary pancreatic biliary duct junction so 
that that is reciprocal reflex what happens if this reciprocal reflex occurs so this is your diagrammatic picture represented by the picture so you are seeing from there there is a long channel the, the opening is an outside the duodenum and there is a long channel long common channel then the sphincter action doesn't affect your doesn't going to affect the pancreatic or biliary junction so what happens there is a reflex of the pancreas and the bile and that is pancreatic biliary reflex the proteolytic enzymes get released these proteolytic enzymes induce the epithelium lining of your bile ducts so it ultimately leads to inflammation ectasia and dilatation of your bile duct this leading to this cyst formation called as collidocal cyst if this injury keeps on going this important here is that the injury is keep on going till this gap it forms collidocal cyst if the injury inflammation keeps on going then it gives rise to hyperplasia of the cells metaplasia finally into a carcinoma so next we'll see what is the investigation of choice investigation of choice is mrcp mrcp is nowadays a gold standard investigation for biliary tree anatomy so the role of ercp follows down see if you want to diagnose the junctional anomaly which forms the basis of this collidocal cyst then you have to do ercp and we have already discussed that in type 3 that is intraduodenal dilatation of the bile duct it has got to do nothing with your anomalous pancreatic bile duct junction it is mainly forms the pathogenesis for type 1 cyst type 4 cyst and type 2 cyst for a some extent that is your type 3 cyst and type 5 it is it is entirely different the uh, anomaly of pancreatic bile duct junction doesn't doesn't suit here it's important so the management of collidocosis and carolis disease is varies the investigations to varies so in cases when you want to know the junction anomaly or in cases of collidocal seal then ercp is the best investigation you can have it has an added advantage that you can collect the cell brush for epithelium cells and you can look for any malignant transformation and you can also get the intrapiliary amylase level so that you can diagnose the pancreatic reflex if the value is more than 8000 to 10000 then it suggests there is a pancreatic reflex secondly it is not only diagnostic purpose of collidocosil it can be a therapeutic you can do an endoscopic sphincterotomy or a sphincteroplasty so it is both diagnostic and therapeutic so next comes what is the timing of intervention you see it's important that even if you diagnose it antenatally immediate intervention is not warranted that doesn't mean that you can delay to a longer period excessive delay is also not advisable so should be done the surgery should be done within few months of the delivery to four to five months after the delivery suppose that there is a older patients coming with comorbidities and in sepsis then there will you have to do a pre operative drainage is necessary here with your IV antibiotic coverage still your patient becomes stable in this case the patients are unstable and they are not fit for surgery so the ideal thing to do is you give a broad spectrum IV antibiotics under the coverage of biliary penetration with a biliary drainage or a hepatic drainage once the patient is stable then the definitive management can be carried out in most cases with suppurative pruritus that is no if a patient doesn't have any comorbidities no comorbid condition is there in patients then the broad spectrum iv antibiotics with your biliary penetration is suffice to make your patient to fit for surgery or your definitive management so why you need to do a surgery already as we have discussed there are n number of complications matters such as your gallstones cystic lithiasis hepatolithiasis cholangitis cholangitis then your biliary cirrhosis the most important thing is that collidocal cyst are considered pre malignant 
the recent behind that is that the pancreatic or biliary reflux due to the anomalous pancreatic bile duct junction so surgery is your definitive procedure which is a resection and reconstruction since there are five types and anomalous pancreatic duct junction holds true only for one and type 4 the other types and their management are differs so we will see in detail in separate what is the management or different types of cyst in type 1 that is circular refusiform dilatation of the common bile duct so what we will do is that just excise this part and we do a ru y astemosis dejinostomy is the treatment of choice we excise the cyst and ru ru y limb genostomy in type 2 there is a lateral diverticulum there is only a lateral diverticulum so what we can do is that one thing we can excise this and suture it which was done previously now as we have seen earlier that it is a 30 percent chance of getting malignancy it is better to resect and reconstruct as we have seen in type 1 similar thing and be done. Excision and reconstruction through Y is not coming. Coming to type 3, we will discuss what we will do in type 3. As far as now, you just write it as a trans duodenal spinstroplasty. For type 4 and type 5, if there is localized, if there is a localized disease, there is a localized disease in type 4, then we can opt for hepatectomy. Type 5 is your Herolis disease. If it is localized to one low, to one low, then we can think of lobectomy. But the definitive treatment is definitive treatment or the beneficial treatment for your patient will be liver transplant. This is definitive treatment. And another thing I want to discuss is that suppose it's related to your anatomy. Suppose your tumor is tightly adherent. This is your portal vein, this is your cyst. This is your anterior wall, this is your posterior wall. Sometimes the posterior wall gets tightly adherent. Tightly adherent to portal vein. So what we do is that we excise the anterior wall with the mucosa of the posterior wall and we leave the serosa of the posterior wall intact like this. Since it is a close relation with portal vein, we may injure portal vein. Portal vein injury is avoided first thing and the reason for your posterior wall adhesion is that say in type 3 polydocosyl that is your polydocosyl which is polydocosyl they say that sometimes there are uh, and the these in the basis behind this polydocosyl they say is anomalous pancreatic biliary duct junction sometimes this pancreatic duct has a main pancreatic duct of Wilson accessory pancreatic duct of Santorbi this main duct of pan of uh, wills and sometimes may open into your posterior cysts posterior wall of your cyst so this posterior wall becomes more adherent when compared to your anterior wall to the portal vein the reason behind the posterior wall infiltration into the portal vein the hypothesis or the thesis or the theory behind this the proposed theory is that sometimes your pancreatic duct the pancreas has main pancreatic duct and accessory pancreatic ducts. The main pancreatic duct of Wilson, accessory pancreatic duct of Santorini. They both combine and they open as a pancreatic duct and it has to join with your bile duct. The whole basis behind polydocal cyst is that there is an anomaly of your pancreatic biliary duct junction. So what happens is that sometimes this main pancreatic duct of Wilson doesn't join with your accessory duct. It may directly open into the posterior wall of the cyst so basically that is going to be a reflex of pancreatic juices into your bile to this posterior wall and making the epithelium more prone for inflammation ectasia dilatation and hyperplasia metaplasia finally leading to tumor so a tumor has a higher probability to infiltrate into your adjacent structures such as your portal vein so under these circumstances we do a procedure. The name of this procedure is called. It's called Lily's procedure.
but see this things are not a definitive and are not followed nowadays the surgery really procedure is not in common practice next a patient with right upper upper quadrant pain upper quadrant palpable mass and jaundice typically of your triad of colidocal cyst or biliary cyst to be more precise comes followed by investigation such as ultrasound MRCP and gives a diagnosis of colidocal cyst what you will do is that you will see for the size of the cyst if it is greater than 3 cm or if it is less than 3 cm if it is less than 3 cm you do an ERCP with biopsy if it is greater than 3 cm you do exploration with frozen section remember this is in particular to the management of colidocal cyst that is type 3 that is intra duodenal part of your bile duct then becomes dilated so what are going to do after this this is your initial step you are seeing USG and MRCP and you will coming to a diagnosis of colidocal cyst and if this tumor size or this is size is less than 3 cm you do a ERCP with biopsy if it is more than 3 cm you do a exploration with frozen section if your frozen section and your biopsy comes as intestinal epithelium then you do in ERCP you can do spinchrotomy plus or minus spinchroplasty here cyst excision in open exploration you can do cyst excision with spinchroplasty Whereas if the frozen section and your biopsy turns out to be biliary epithelium, then it is suggestive of metaplasia. Then it would be a pancreatico duodenectomy, which is termed as a whipples. Or you do, if it is not possible, like in such case, I have told you, sometimes it can infiltrate the portal, and you can do a subtotal cyst excision with longer surveillance period okay understood so you are doing if it is more or less than 3 you do yes with biopsy if it is more than 3 you do force and with exploration if it is less than you do cyst excision with sensoroplasty you do sensorotomy and if it is more you do ripples or subtotal cyst excision with long term surveillance okay this is in brief i have told in detail about the colidocal cyst classification what are the complications, what are the clinical features, when to intervene, when to do definitive management, what is the pathogenesis, that is the recent advance which I have highlighted in detail about the recent pathophysiology, that is your anomaly of your pancreatic bile duct junction and the specific management of your specific type of colidocal cyst and in detail you have seen Carolis disease and the management of your colidocal cyst. Thank you.